Welcome to Be Whole, a podcast for women longing to live a life worthy of the call they have received. I'm Christy Horsch, your life coach and mentor. Let me accompany you as you navigate the chaos of motherhood through taking your thoughts captive for Christ. This is episode 143. Hello, everyone. We are coming up to one of the most joyful and possibly stressful seasons of the year. As the calendar you know, changes to October and the weather gets a little cooler, the leaves start to change, we just know what's on the way. It's almost Christmas time and all that comes with it. And of course, we know that Christmas is for us to celebrate and welcome our incarnate Lord. But as moms, we have a lot on our plates during the season. We have a full calendar, a home to decorate, food to prepare, gifts to buy and wrap, parties to attend, hospitality to show, plus all the other things that we normally do. Those are still there too. And it can feel overwhelming. It can also be intimidating and exhausting. But we're thinking ahead. Here we are, early October, a little less than three months from Christmas. What if we started to prepare now? What if we took care of some of those things that stressed us out? And we took care of those things now so that we could focus on what matters during Advent and Christmas. And this is what we're going to be doing in Beckend in October and November. Each week, we're going to focus on one thing to help us feel more prepared and more content with the season ahead. We're going to get our house in order. Of course, getting your house in order doesn't just mean your physical house. It also means your schedule, your plans, your priorities. And we will definitely be talking about your physical house. But we will also be talking about your physical and mental health and your spirituality. At the end of this course, you will have all the tools to go into Advent with peace. You'll know yourself better and understand how to work with the gifts that God gave you. This program is available through Beckend, which is a monthly membership that's filled with courses to help you live your life worthy of the call you have received. However, since I think this program will be so helpful, I'm also going to offer it as a standalone program. This means that you can sign up for this course alone for the next two months. You'll get access to weekly videos, monthly group coaching, and a community of like-minded women who are seeking peace in their holiday season. You can go to beholdyourlife.com for more information and to get signed up. I will link that in the show notes. But with that in mind, today I wanted to talk to you about mind clutter. But first, let's get started with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and fill us. Come and fill our minds. Help our thoughts to be your thoughts. Teach us. Teach us to be present in every moment. To be present to those around us and present to the life you've given us. So that we can approach our lives with a grateful heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So mind clutter. I define mind mind clutter as the things that are in your brain that stop you from being present to the current moment. It prevents you from doing necessarily what you need to do in the way that you want to do it. So in the weight loss program that I run, Beloved, we talk about this a lot. So I'm going to give you an example in weight loss. Some people struggle with mind chatter related to food. So maybe they're at the park watching their kids play and chatting with some other moms. And they're thinking about what's going on around them. But there's also this thought about the food that they're going to eat later. Maybe they promise the kids ice cream after the park. And they're debating if they should or shouldn't get get some for themselves. Maybe they're planning a run to their favorite coffee shop for a sugary drink. Maybe they're just planning dinner and looking forward to all that they can eat. While they're conversing and watching, their mind is divided. They're still focused on the food. Most moms are guilty of this in some form. Maybe you're reading to your kids and your brain is listing off all the other things that you need to be doing. Your husband asks you to watch a movie with him, but all you can think about as you sit there are the dishes that have been left undone. A friend stops by unexpectedly to chat. You can't fully focus on the conversation because the unfolded laundry in the corner that looked kind of small this morning, now looks like an embarrassing mountain with your friend there. Your kid needs your attention, but you just heard your email from work then. 
Mind chatter are the things that divide your attention. You're present, but you're not fully present. You're aware, but you're distracted. As moms, we get so good at this that we think that others don't notice. But they do. They know. Other moms excuse us in it because they're doing the same thing. Our kids eventually accept it as normal, which kind of breaks our hearts. But we can't seem to change. Our husbands miss us, but they don't see anything either because they understand that we are in a season where things are stressful and require a lot of our mental energy. But what if we could reduce that mind chatter? What if we could choose not to think about some of those things? What if we could be fully present to those around us? Let's look at St. Teresa of Calcutta. We all know that that woman had a full schedule. She did so much, but she always placed the Lord first. She's so inspirational. But even though by the world's standards, she was incredibly busy, she was very present to those in front of her. When she was stopped, she wouldn't roll her eyes or sigh. She kindly and lovingly spoke to the person in front of her as if they were the embodiment of Christ. She made people feel seen and loved. She didn't rush them. What was her secret? Well, she saw Christ in them. She saw that if he placed that person in her day, then she could stop and be present in that moment. He would make the time for all the rest. When her schedule started to get too busy and her sister's started to lament that there wasn't time for an hour of daily adoration. She upped their daily adoration to two hours. As we talked about in the last week's podcast, God gives us the time we need to do his will. His will is for us to be fully present in each moment. God is present to us in the present. While we can allow him to heal our past and we can plan with him for the future, he is here with us now in this moment, in the present. And because of this, when we're present to, present to others, we can give them a taste of the Lord's love. It's a nice thought. Let's be more present. But how do we do it? I think it's something that can take a lifetime to fully learn and embrace. But for today, we can become aware. We can become aware of our mind chatter. Start to notice when our mind drifts from the present moment. Make note of what your mind chatter was about and then remind your brain that you're working on being more present to those in front of you. Let me give you an example. Let's say your four-year-old gets up in the morning and wants to tell you about her dream. You're already running late to get out the door, but you can see how important it is to her. You preface the conversation. I really want to hear your dream. We can only talk about it for five minutes. Then we have to get ready to go. During that five minutes, you want to be present. She starts talking and you find your mind slipping to all the things that need to be done before you leave the house. You're catching words and pieces, but you're feeling more anxious as your list in your mind grows. You notice your anxiety and you realize that the mind chatter is getting in the way of being present. You take a deep breath, remind yourself that you're going to be present for these five minutes. Say a quick, help me to do this well, Lord, and focus on her again. You might need to do this 10 times during the five minutes. But with practice, it'll start to get easier. And you might be thinking, why should we even bother? Well, we know that our thoughts create our emotions. Our emotions elicit a response. That response will get us our outcome. We've talked about taking our thoughts captive for Christ many times before on this podcast. When we aren't thinking about the present moment, our emotions and actions won't always re reflect the current circumstance. So going back to our four-year-old sharing her dream, in that moment, she's sharing a happy and silly dream. And we're thinking, I have so much to do. And because we have that thought, we're feeling anxious or overwhelmed. And we respond to that anxiety by looking at the clock, breathing shallowly, hurrying her through her story. Our outcome is that she could see our physical anxiety, which as a young child, she's probably reading to be annoyance. Yes, she gets to share, but not to someone who's present and actually hearing her. Let's try again. This time, we notice that anxiety and we choose to end the brain chatter. Instead, we decide to think a thought that keeps us more present. Instead of thinking, I have so much to do, we could think, oh, I love her so much. I'm so glad I get to hear these special things from her heart. From that thought, we feel love and gratitude. And from those emotions, we respond with care and attentiveness. As a result, we both feel filled up from the interaction. Your thoughts matter. 
being present makes a difference. This week, just try to be more aware. In our busy world, we're trained to be multitasking and focusing on multiple things at once. Start to become aware of the brain chatter and start turning it off. If you notice a pattern, for example, if you think, oh, wow, my brain chatter is mostly about food or mostly about my work schedule or mostly about this other issue that's been going on. Notice what comes up in your mind. Notice what the chatter is about most of the time and then also take it to prayer. Start to determine, is there something disordered about this in my life that it's taking over other time periods? How is God calling you to live this out? Have you gotten off the path? Is there disorder there? And how can you allow the Lord to come in and heal that so you can shut that mind chatter down? It is possible to be present. It is possible to calm your mind. Because when we become aware and do just that, we're one step closer to living our lives worthy of the call we have received. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Christy Horsch. If you enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend or share it on social media. Remember the things that we talk about in this podcast, we dive even deeper to them in Beckend, the Behold Monthly Membership. You learn these tools and how to implement them no matter your circumstances. This is a powerful way to live your life. And for the month of October and November, we will be getting our home in order. You can have access to this through Backend or as a standalone course. So make sure to check that out in the show notes. I will see you next week. And in the meantime, I'm praying for you. God bless.